Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, they've been around for 10 years. Where is it being used? Like how many of you have used Bitcoin this week, you know, in your everyday purchases? So the idea of Intercoin was born uh, three years ago. Uh, we started the company in order to sort of make crypto mainstream. And what that means is essentially mainstream is things that people use all the time in their everyday lives. So things like Facebook, things like Twitter, LinkedIn, right? These kinds of things people use all the time. Uh, here's um, LinkedIn, for example. A lot of the time, um, they, these social networks have started to add a payment layer on top. So for example, WeChat, if you, you know, yeah. if you have WeChat, then obviously you're paying, uh, if you're in China, you're paying a lot of businesses with WeChat. Mm -hmm. So that's what it means to be mainstream. And the thing is, we've noticed that, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, they've been around for 10 years, but the problem is that, uh, well, Bitcoin has anyway, and where is it being used? Like how many of you have used Bitcoin this week, you know, in your everyday purchases, right? Um, so the idea is that if we don't make crypto mainstream, what will happen is that um, Amazon and the central banks and companies like that, Facebook, Amazon, they will create their own digital currency, but that digital currency will be centralized just like WeChat. Um, and then essentially they will have all the control over everything, monetary policy. They'll know everyone's transactions. It will be extremely centralized. Um, and while that may be okay for many purposes, I think crypto has the power to do a lot more. Um, and it's not just about currencies. It's also about other applications like voting, elections, so the goal of Intercoin is to give every community the ability to have its own um, applications of this kind. So I'm gonna kind of go through these applications. Feel free to stop me, ask me any questions. Um, so first of all, why use blockchain? Why use crypto? Um, because if you don't use blockchain, what happens is that you have a database like uh, MySQL, right? Or something in the back end which is one place where you can co come in and see all the data. And if you have access to that database, you can change anything in that data set. Uh, for example, uh, if it's an election, you could go and change the votes and nobody will know what the real votes were originally. People might have receipts, right? But it's hard to make sure that that data is not corrupted. Um, so the point of blockchain applications is to start to give a community a way to essentially make incorruptible data uh, so that only the people can only change the parts of the data which they have a key to change. And the rules are baked into the data itself. So the, the rules are running on smart contracts that are also immutable, um, or at least immutable to the point of you have to take over the whole, a, a large part of the network to hack anything. Um, so if you have that, what would you do? How would you create applications for communities? So Intercoin creates the following application. The first application is obviously the, the main, um, sort of the base layer is just, hey, you wanna be able to invite people. You wanna be able to manage roles and permissions. So if someone is a company president or you know, a manager, or in this case, for example, Norman, uh, he's our team manager. So assigning those roles and permissions is secure. No one can come in change the database and say that they are the president of the company or something like that. So all of these things are documented. Um, you know, we, whenever we try to document things, we do it in the open. So people can comment, they can do a lot of, uh, they can also ask questions this way. Um, and increasingly, uh, because we have GitHub, all the code is already uh, on, on GitHub because um, we also code in the open. And so, you know, if, if developers see this and they want to be contributors, they can earn intercoins for essentially contributing to this growing ecosystem. So that's another use of cryptocurrency is to reward open source contributors. 
Uh, so the project essentially gets to issue its own tokens and then pay people in these tokens so that it's almost like, you know, um, people who believe in the idea early and contribute to it, they earn the tokens. And then later on, they're the ones that also get to win uh, if, if this ecosystem takes off. So they're, in a sense, also investing alongside you. Um, okay, currencies. So once you have your own community, what if you could issue your own currency, right? What would be the goal of that? Well, if you have your own currency, you can do a lot more than if you're constantly relying on outside currencies like federal dollars or euros in, you know, or, or whatever. Uh, pounds or kronor, for example, used to be, uh, as you have in uh, Sweden. The thing is, yes, it's good to have the federal currency, but if you have your own, you can do many, many things that you otherwise could not. One of the things you could do is you could print some of it and airdrop it outside of the country. So people can only use it inside your country uh, because that's where businesses accept it. Uh, but um, suppose that people come into possession of it, like Disney dollars or whatever, they might want to go to that city. They might want to go to Disney World or Disneyland uh, and spend the Disney dollars there. So it's a way to attract people for tourism and all these kinds of things. You might want to buy some Disney dollars at a discount before going to Disney World. So you might ask your friends, hey, you have some Disney dollars, can I get some? Um, so it's a way to attract people. And right now, a lot of Northern cities, right, they saw capital and people kind of leave. Uh, so if they want to attract capital back, some of the ways it can do that includes printing their money and airdropping it around the world. Another thing they can do is print money and give it to their own citizens. When I say print money, I mean they can issue their own currency and run their own monetary policy however they decide. And I'll get into voting and democratic uh, decisions in a moment. Um, but again, the idea of having your own currency gives you a little bit of a soft power. Same way that if you go to a casino and you have the casino chips, uh, within the casino, there is a network effect. So, uh, you know, you can go to the restaurant in the casino or near, you know, in the hotel, and they will take your chips because it's easy for them to liquidate those chips, right? Uh, the further away you go from the casino, the less people start accepting it. And that's kind of the point. So it's just like speaking a language. Like, why are we all speaking English? Because everyone else is speaking English. It gives you access to a large network. Right. So money is like that. And so uh, that's what we'd like to see communities creating, doing the work and creating their own sort of um, ecosystem within their community. And then Intercoin helps to connect those communities together. All right. So once you have your own currency, you might want to actually uh, pay people out in that currency. So we have a contract called income contract. And it was actually born out of a uh, conversations that we had internally uh, at Intercoin. Um, like I said, we pay people at Intercoin, but we have one Intercoin wallet, right, that uh, essentially is controlled uh, by the principals at Intercoin. And a lot of time we were late in paying people, he said. Uh, Norman was constantly telling me like, hey man, you gotta make sure that these people get paid. So we built this contract in a way to delegate the ability to pay and to set rules. So in other words, if you have a company and you know communities include companies as well, so then you can pay your employees and contractors using this smart contract income, using your own currency or using any other ERC20 token. So the idea is that, uh, remember you have roles and permissions. So one role could be manager, and then you say that managers can pay out and you set limits and you say this person can be paid this much per week or this much per day and so on. So everything is enforced. Limits are enforced. Uh, the manager can pay out. And I think recently we, we posted in the Telegram chat, we posted a video where we're kind of showing the, um, the income contract, how it works. But the thing is, right now we're showing how it works kind of by describing it and and it's still you know clunky using uh ether scan right it's using interfaces which are very geeky okay like this um we are working on releasing 
a user-friendly Intercoin app in the stores, the idea it will be that it's not just enough to make these smart contracts. You need to have a user interface that makes it really, really easy to use because only then people will actually be able to use it. So in a way, Intercoin app is going to be an Ethereum wallet, but it's going to be the next generation of Ethereum wallet. So it won't be just about you know, uh, transferring money to other people like uh, MetaMask. It will be about elections and voting and paying people out.